Now, we're honored to have with us today yet another impressive group of senior uh, DOD leaders to discuss an important and relevant topic, I think, to all of us here, how we can create healthier installations and defense communities to help better support our warfighters. Now, we, you know, you all know we spent a great deal on our equipment and on ensuring our equipment is well-fueled. So one might think that our war, for, our war fighters certainly deserve no less. Uh, the, um, uh, so I think our bases and our installations uh, have a role to play in a society where there is just unprecedented numbers of individuals with weight and health issues uh, and the very society that we draw our, our service members from. So leading the, the, the panel discussion is Mr. Chuck Milam. Uh, he will moderate our next panel. Uh, what I'd like you to know about Chuck is that he retired not all that long ago from the Defense Department as the Acting Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Military Community and Family Policy after over 37 years of service to our, our country. And during that time, he focused on uh, much of his efforts on quality of life and resilience for our total force. Chuck has been a, a, a longtime staunch champion of health and wellness for our service members and families, and he led the charge on a number of key initiatives across the Department of Defense to include uh, the Air Force's Food Transformation Initiative and DOD's Healthy Base Initiative. He also was instrumental in launching Healthy Army Communities and Air Force Smart Fueling. Uh, service-led programs to implement the findings from the Healthy Base Initiative. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Chuck Milam. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for that warm introduction. Uh, it's an honor to serve as today's moderator. We have an exceptional panel today that will focus on ways that all food stakeholders on our installations will work together and with our local community to improve the availability of healthy, performance-enhancing food options and encourage smart eating. During last year's ADC Summit, we focused on the challenge we face in our armed forces when it comes to obese and overweight service members and the negative impacts this is having on readiness, resilience, and retention. You may recall that Congressman Tim Ryan, a leading advocate for healthy military, stressed that this is a problem not just for our military, but also for our nation. Today we'll focus on what we're doing to address this issue, especially as it relates to our installation food system. I want to stress, though, that with over 70% of our service members and military families living off base, that we need to partner with local communities. And it's critical to addressing healthy food availability and smart eating holistically. Now I'd like to introduce our panelists. Lieutenant General Bradley Becker. He was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the field artillery, and upon graduating from the University of California at Davis in May of 1986 with a bachelor's degree in political science. He also holds a master's degree in political science from Auburn University, Montgomery, Alabama. He has earned the combat action badge. He's airborne and air assault and ranger qualified. Prior to taking command of the U.S. Army Installation Command, General Becker was Chief Office of Security Cooperation, U.S. Central Command, Iraq. General Becker, throughout his distinguished career, has been a passionate advocate for active living and healthy eating. Personally, I've never seen anyone more active in this particular topic that we're talking about today than General Becker. Please join me in welcoming Lieutenant General Brad Becker. <laughs> Mr. Tom Scholl. An experienced CEO and soldier for life, Tom has a proven track record of rapid value creation at some of America's most respected and valued companies, including Macy's, Barney's New York, and Wise Foods. A graduate of the United States Military Academy and Harvard Business School, Tom became the first civilian CEO to lead the Army and Air Force Exchange Service in 2012. The exchange is an $8.7 billion enterprise with about 35,000 employees and operations in 33 countries and 49 states. As a partner in the service's readiness, resiliency, recruiting, and retention efforts, the exchange takes a holistic approach to providing beef fit options to promote and encourage healthy, better for you options. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tom Scholl. <laughs> 
Lieutenant General J. Silveria. He's the superintendent at the United States Air Force Academy, Colorado Springs, Colorado. He directs a four-year regimen of military training, academics, athletic, and character development programs leading to a Bachelor of Science degree and a commission as a second lieutenant. Lieutenant General Severia grew up in an Air Force family, and he's a 1985 graduate of the United States Air Force Academy. He is a combat pilot with more than 3,900 hours in a variety of fighter aircraft. He's flown combat sorties over the Balkans and Iraq and served as vice commander at Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan. Please welcome General Silveria. Unfortunately, uh, Sergeant Major John Wayne Troxell uh, wasn't able to be here today, and I know many of you brought your uh, entrenching tools to have him sign those, so you're probably going to have to go back to the Pentagon, but uh, he sends his regrets. Uh, he's with the, the acting SecDef uh, this afternoon. So leading into our, our first question, our defense... Am I on? Our defense leaders in Congress, uh, they've been concerned about this growing obesity crisis that we've had uh, for quite some time now. Last year at this very summit, I showed a, an obesity map. It's a series of three maps. The first map showed the United States in 1990, where the United States didn't have really an obesity problem. In 2013, uh, about 36% of our, our bases and uh, states were considered obese. The predictive model map from the Center for Disease Control shows that by 2030, I mean, we're going to have a real problem. Most of the United States becomes obese, and those states that are currently obese become morbidly obese. The one thing that we found in many of the initiatives that we led, Healthy Base Initiative, uh, Air Force Smart Fueling, Army, uh, Healthy Army Communities, is that our military dining facilities is probably the, currently the most healthy place to eat on a military installation. But one thing that we have found is that it's, it's an inefficient system, and our service members on meal card are only eating about half of their meals in a military dining facility today. So I'm going to go ahead and start out with uh, asking uh, General Becker the, the first question here. As a senior leader at our Army installations, you have oversight over food at a lot of our garrison army locations that we have. Can you just tell us some of the things that you've been doing? We've talked about healthy army communities, just some of the work that you've been doing in the past. I will, thanks, and I promise I'll get to the question. But first, I want to thank the Association of Defense Communities for, uh, for hosting this. I apologize for not making the Miami trip. We had a bit of a housing crisis going on, and I'm thankful that we're talking healthy army communities right now and not housing. But. Uh, I, I want to go back real quick, and you talked about obesity, and by 2030, 60% of our young people, it's projected, will be obese and not, not qualified to be in the military. But something I learned beyond just obesity that, that is another detrimental effect of, of these unhealthy eating habits. When I was a command general at Fort Jackson, we trained about 50 to 45 to 50,000 soldiers a year, brand new young men and women, really, really you know, top quality folks, and I would see them come on off the buses Monday and Tuesday, t Tuesday evening was, was the big draw. Wednesday would be a little smaller. But I'd, I'd go out there, usually around 21, 2200. The buses from the MEP stations uh, would, would show up with, the, with these young recruits. And as I watched them get off the bus, I was pleasantly surprised. I said, well, they, they'd met the weight standard to at least show up to basic training. But I said, boy, these folks look, look pretty good. And early into my command, I, I, I came to realize that the number one injury at basic combat training was hip fractures not from falling off of obstacle courses, not from um, falling off the rappel tower, but from walking. Their bone density for many of these young men and women who had not played athletics was that of a 70 or 80 year old person because of their poor eating habits. So, so the, I, I bring that up because it isn't just about obesity and, and overeating, but it's just about, because most of these young people were not overweight, but, but they were not physically capable in some cases of completing basic combat training, which is, you know, put at a level that we should be able to bring a young man or woman, we're not. So this, this is a huge problem. And so uh, I, I was excited when I met Mr. Milam to, to have this discussion about what we could do because as he pointed out, this is something I'm passionate about. And years ago, I thought the Army did a great job in focusing on physical fitness. Ever since I've been a lieutenant, I've been in units where every single day started with physical training, you didn't do anything else. We did a good job. We did 
decent with the sleep, and when you had commanders that paid attention on having early formations. But the one area we were failing was in diet, was healthy fueling for our service members. And as we've moved to these consolidated dining facilities, as you heard, soldiers are eating about 1.3, less than half their meals at the dining facility where they're likely to get the healthiest, the healthiest choice. And so as we started to dig in this, especially when I was a, de a deputy commanding general with the 25th Infantry Division, a light infantry division where we expect all of our soldiers to be extremely physically fit, trying to figure out why aren't they eating at the dining facility? Well, in most cases, it was not that there wasn't healthy choices or even that the food was poor, even though they don't normally get a, a high rating. It was convenience. It was, I got to drive across post. If I'm going to do that, I can stop at Burger King. I can stop at the Shopette. And they just grab something quick. So we started looking at what options we can do. And some of the things we've done is what we call grab and goes at fitness centers. So a lot of our soldiers, whether they actually do PT at the fitness center or they just finish there so they can shower before they go to work, is our dining facility will provide healthy menu choices that soldiers can use our credit card. Or if you're not a credit card holder, you can, you can pay the, 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 the charge that you would if you're going to the dining facility to get a healthy meal. We call it our grab and go. We do it at the fitness centers and other and brigade areas where they don't have dining facilities so that they have a healthy option without going through the drive through at some fast food restaurant. We've also experimented at Fort Sill with a uh, MWR run food truck. And that food truck shows up to a place called Snow Hall where all lieutenants and captains go to school. They're in a hurry. They got about 45 minutes to eat lunch. They're either gonna go to the shop bed or through a drive through But instead, that we've got this MWR run truck and 40% of the items on the menu are healthy choice items. And, and they love it. So between the food trucks, the grab and goes, uh, we have food kiosks in some CDCs now, again, for convenience. They've got to drop their children off. They're in a hurry, um, and they get, they get a healthy option. Of course, we're partnering with AFES to work in, and I won't go, go into Mr. Scholl's discussion about what we can do to bring other healthy options into our food courts and on our posts as well. But I think the culminating thing, the, the, the one area that, that, we're, what we, that would bring all of this together as, as we, MCOM, partners with the Army G4, G9, OSD, DECA, AFES, um, MedCom is, is the, is the uh, campus dining, which, which offers, and again, I won't go into detail, I think uh, General Severi will discuss that, but offers another option for our service members to be able to um, use their meal card, use the benefit that they have, and, pr and get healthy eating options without necessarily going to the dining facility itself. Um, and I would also say, since we've got the Association of Defense Communities here, 70% of our soldiers live off post. So, they're not all, even though, and a lot of those will eat on post because they come in in the morning early and they don't want to have to leave and go back home. And they don't have time. But, but it's also what can we do in our communities to, to provide healthy eating options outside of our gates. Um, and, and I think we're doing a little bit better. But again, I would ask for your help uh, because if you look, again, demographically, a lot of our installations where they tend to be, our soldiers tend to be overweight, the local community tends to, to mirror that as well. So that's something we can partner with. So thank you. That was an excellent response. I, we'll talk a little bit more about the campus dining model, but just for the audience here, what we're talking about is a lot of our meal card holders, you know, when we say they're not eating all of their meals uh, in the military dining facility, what happens is they, they get an entitlement to eat three meals a day in the, the military dining facilities. When they're only eating 1.3 to 1.5 meals per day, they're going out of pocket outside of the military dining facility to spend their own money. So that entitlement is not being used. And I think that's, that's going to be the core of the discussion that we have today. And really, the, this isn't anything revolutionary that we're talking about here. It's basically the same concept that colleges and universities have been doing for decades. So thank you. That was an excellent response. So Mr. Scholl, um, as the CEO of the DOD's largest resale organization, and I know that you serve more food on base than any other stakeholder, what have you been doing to provide more healthy food options? Well, we, uh, first of all, I want to thank the ADC for the kind invitation to be part of this distinguished panel. I'm not sure I live up to the, to the distinguished panel level, but I certainly am happy to be here and uh, uh, honored to represent this important cause as an, old, as an Army brat and then as an old soldier. I can tell you that uh, dining experience is pretty critical to, uh, certainly was critical to my soldiers in the day and, and now even in many respects more critical because of uh, the new generations are demanding more choice, and they're also, uh, they, they deserve it. They deserve the experience that you would receive on, uh, in a college environment. I know my son went to Notre Dame, and it happens that General Halverson, one of uh, General Becker's predecessors, 
uh, had two daughters at Notre Dame, and we marveled at their campus dining experience. The dining facility was, I thought was great. That's where I wanted to go. But my, my son wanted to go to Cadoba or, or Subway or some of the other uh, concepts there on the campus, and I always was you know, puzzled by that. But it's, it's like General Becker said, it's grab and go, they're in a hurry. They also want to enjoy a, a broader uh, a number of choices. So it is also about, about that and making sure that we meet their needs. This is aligned not only for their fitness, for sure, but it's also aligned with the fact that this generation demands more choices. And it's my view, we need to meet the needs of the customer and give them those choices. We, will, we are all in to support uh, this initiative through our uh, services. We have 1,700 facilities. Uh, we serve 108 million meals a year. We have the capacity to add another 50 million meals. So you can imagine how we can be a force multiplier with General Becker. And we're all in to support uh, the Army and the Air Force uh, because, again, these represent my two biggest customers. In fact, they are my two biggest customers. And so I'm so proud to be able to so support them in this critical initiative with our capacity because we have grown our uh, better for you concepts dramatically. We now have uh, a lot more subways. Uh, we have um, Boston Market, Panera Bread, Freshens, and the list goes on. But what we'd like to do is align with the needs of uh, the Army and the Air Force to make sure those concepts, whatever they are, are be fit and uh, pass uh, uh, the test, if you will, of being sufficiently uh, nutritious and taste good. Uh, I, I introduced at Wise Foods as CEO there, I, I, we took out trans fats out of the snacks, first ones to do that. We lowered the sodium content for snacks to a, a, an acceptable level in our chips. I don't know how many of you have had the Wise Owl chips, but we called it Wise Choices. So this, that's an example on my journey of where I've done something similar, not as impactful as this will be, as we partner uh, more with the Army and the Air Force to to bring wholesome food uh, uh, alternatives to, uh, to our troops and their families. And uh, you know, as my father used to say, 30 years in the Army, 40 months in combat, I'm all in for the Army as long as my family is taken care of. So we have an obligation to take care of that troop, the trooper, and we also have an obligation to take care of their families. So we're, we're all in to do just that. Um, I would say that. Uh, I think we can do it even better than the college campuses. I always test, try to test the limits here on what we can do to make it something that uh, is aspirational for young soldiers. I think it will impact retention and certainly will have a, a good impact on readiness and resiliency. So we're, we're all in to do that. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, in order for campus dining to be successful, uh, it's important. You're the largest food stakeholder on a military installation, and I'm excited that you're you're energized. You're excited about this effort, and you're going to lean forward to bring in those healthy choices. So, thank you, Tom. We really appreciate that, General Silveria. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I know that you guys have been doing a lot of work on Air Force smart fueling uh, out at the Air Force Academy. I know that when I was talking to senior leaders on the Army side, they say, "Hey, why aren't we doing this at the other service academies?" I said, "Let's get it right first." Uh, at USAFA, and then we'll go from there. But can you tell us a little bit about the work that you guys have been doing? Uh, yes, sir, absolutely. Uh, first off, I want to uh, shout out to my uh, uh, great defense community in Colorado Springs that are that are here with me. Uh, I, I'm part of the best defense community, I think, in uh, in America. So so thanks to, the, thanks to you folks for being here. Uh, it, it was brought up about obesity, and I think we, we have to start there because uh, at a developmental institution, we're trying to make officers... Uh, that uh, career Air Force officers, it's important that we develop them in all aspects. So we have to teach them about fitness. Just feeding them is not going to be enough. We have to teach them about fitness. They have to teach them about being the life of a warrior and what it means to be fit and what it means. And, and the way that we're going to feed them has to be part of that. So what we set out to do was to be a little bit more deliberate about what we were, what we were feeding them and so that we could take an opportunity to, to, to bring them in first off. We brought the cadets in as well as the staff and started to look for ways that we could get at the, 
the one meal a day that they're having and then they're, then they're eating in other areas and spending, how could we find ways to get their buy-in? So we were very deliberate about it. And one of the things they really wanted to get at was this grab-and-go concept. And so, uh, uh, so we started uh, developing grab-and-go a lot more through the day and a lot more in the evening with healthy choices that they could get. Uh, we, let, we allowed the cadets to, uh, to be involved in the selection of what there was and how it was positioned and how it was presented. So we had their buy-in, and it took off. And they, uh, they, were, they very much uh, loved every aspect of it. We, the more they had it, the more they wanted. Uh, and then the other part of that was we, we really think that in order to get at this larger solution, that we have to partner with every aspect of the facility. And in our case, we have one dining facility, and the problem has to be much larger than that. We have to, or the solution has to come from a much broader base. So with AFES, we need to partner with all of those vendors uh, that Tom's talking about, and that, so that a cadet, in this case, has the ability to have that grab and go, but also has the ability to go to one of those AFES vendors. It gives them the choice, uh, and it also allows them to use that entitlement that they have. And then it also allows us to consider what those choices are. And so we can work with AFES, and we have. They've been excellent partners on these initiatives that allows us to, what facilities are we going to have? What vendors do we have? And that drives some of those choices. And one other part about it is, is that we took a much smarter look at the entire uh, cadet, I guess, day of eating which in some cases starts in a gymnasium, some cases ends in a gymnasium, as well as making nutrition available in those locations. We call it Falcon Fuel because everything at the academy has to have a Falcon label, right? So it's Falcon Fuel, but uh, they can get the right elements that they would have before a workout and the right elements that they would have with, with, uh, after a workout. So trying to get at, uh, get at their nutrition in a broad spectrum way. Well, thank you for leading the way. Yeah, we really appreciate that. General Becker, uh, back to you on our next round of questions here. What, what's the plan to pilot the new food system innovation, kind of the college university model um, at, at Army Garrisons? I know you've been thinking about this a lot. You and I had a conversation several months ago, and I think we talked about an hour and a half on this, and you were very, very passionate about the topic, and we, we talked this morning again. And, uh, and I know that you're going to have to you know, get support uh, from the rest of the Army, and I don't think we're going to have a real problem with that uh, because everyone's on board. I mean, everyone wants to do the right thing. Everyone wants to feed our soldiers healthier options. Um, can you talk about that a little bit? And then I got a second part of the question, I, 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 and it's really to kind of talk about the community piece of it, and I'm going to ask all of our panelists to, to kind of chime in a little bit, and, and I'll share some of the work we did with Healthy Base on how we can partner with the local community as well. Yeah, I'll start actually with this, kind of the second part of your, of your question is, we are partnered with a lot of folks, just speaking from an Army perspective. And while I love unity of effort, and as we've gone to these joint operations over the last 20, 25 years, we talk about unity of effort, but it's, but it's not a principle of war, and unity of command is. And I'm always concerned when we're trying to achieve unity of effort with no unity of command because it seems like nothing moves forward. And I don't know how many years you've been working on this, Mr. Milan, but I know it's a long time. So I got to think, if we're really going to move this forward, it's great that we're working with the Army G4 because they own the dining facility. It's great we're working with the Army G G9 and MWR and MedCom. But but who is in charge? Who who owns this problem? I mean, it's an Army problem. It's really it's a it's a it's a DoD problem as far as the obesity and and and, and just retention. We have soldiers who are overweight. It's not just the young men and women coming in the Army. So as I thought about this, and as the Army has moved to multi-domain operations and defined the strategic support area and realigned Installation Management Command underneath Army Material Command, General Perna, four-star, AMC commander, owns the strategic support area, if you will. And that's where all of our installations are located. That's where our soldiers live and work, families live and work. So as the person who owns that problem, he's turned to me and said, Becker, you got it. Figure this out. You're, you're my MCOM commander. You have the garrisons. So I will continue to work with the Army G9, the G4, all of these other organizations. But the responsibility to make this a reality belongs to General Perna and General Becker. Now, we're, we're, we're going to tackle this like you would try and tackle any elephant, one small bite at a time. And, and we're going to start. Uh, we've looked at a couple places like Fort Sill, where we've piloted the food truck. We've talked about Fort Carson. Uh, so we're going to pick a couple of, of installations, potentially Fort Hood or Fort Bragg, one of our larger installations, 
and we're gonna and we're gonna uh, take this holistic approach that includes the grab and goes, the food trucks, the, the campus dining, and, and see what kind of progress we can make and, and and make that progress quickly. Because for those who aren't familiar with how our installations, I know most of you are being part of ADC, but you know, Installation Management Command runs the installations, but there's a senior commander that all of you work very closely with. I was a senior commander twice at Fort Jackson and then at Military District of Washington, had Belvoir, Meade, AP Hill, and Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall. And it's a senior commander, even though this is, you know, Pern owns the problem and Becker's the guy that's going to fix it for him. Um, the senior commander's got to make this a reality, working and supporting the garrison commanders. So, so that's the approach we're going to take. We'll, we'll pilot probably three or four installations. We will uh, work with those senior commanders and, and then, again, the entire Army community that is, that is involved in making this a reality. I, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think command and control is uh, critically important. I see Zach Prager here from Congressman Ryan's office. I remember when Congressman Ryan asked the DOD, who's in charge of food? And I think they provided you with the spaghetti chart that you still have today. And there's a lot of people in charge of food. But you go to a college or university and there's one director of food. And really, that's what we need to get to. If we're going to transform food and, uh, and bring it to the level that we need to, to, to fuel our human weapon systems that we have, you know, we've got to make sure we've got that central command and control. So thank you for that. Mr. Scholl, um, what is your strategy to transform the exchange food service portfolio to expand the availability of healthy options and encourage smart eating? I began talking about some of that a few minutes ago. but. Uh, we, uh, we're all in all aspects of what we do. For example, the expresses now, we had about 100 uh, B-Fit items in our expresses, or uh, old soldiers call them shopettes. Uh, now we have over 400 items that are approved as B-Fit. And so we want to continue to expand that offering, whether it's fruit, uh, hard-boiled eggs, tuna, name it, you know, it's healthy snacks. And what we do, unlike what we did when I first arrived here, we have end caps that are B-Fit. So the first end cap you see going into a B-Fit, and if you, I mean, into an Express, is B-Fit. And if you don't, then let me know, shoot me an email. It should be a B-Fit end cap as opposed to a Frito-Lay end cap, which is what I uh, encountered when I first arrived at the exchange. So a lot of it is making sure the healthier options are right there in front of the soldiers and uh, airmen and, and all the family members as well, because it is a family issue. We need to encourage family members to uh, really adopt this strategy and become uh, supporters of the warfighter in terms of their, their eating habits. I mentioned the, the much healthier options as it relates to our concessions. We're going to continue to build on what these two uh, distinguished uh, service members, what their priorities are. As I told General Becker this morning, uh, we're, we're a support function. We're a force multiplier for his priorities as it relates to the needs of the Army. And it, it shouldn't be about arguing who's in charge or who has the power. It should be about what's best for warfighters and their families. It should be all about that every day we serve. And so my view about this is a, a big believer in unity of command. And General Perna was my board chair for two years uh, when he was the G4, I've spoken to him about this, and as has uh, General Becker. He is all in, and he will give General Becker the support he needs uh, to drive forward with this and lead it, and we will be the support for that, uh, that capability, as I mentioned, to, uh, to really provide for better options. And I'll get into a little bit of detail just for a second. I think it's important. So we envision um, basically meal cards w w that would include all the options that we present as well. And then there'd be a, 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 a balance. Each month would be uh, reconciled. There'd be a certain amount of money given to, uh, to service members to support the, the, uh, the options that they have so that they can have a declining balance again and reconcile at the end of every month. So the detail is kind of important because we want to limit the number of meals probably that they would have at the the exchange versus the dining facility because we want to continue to support using the dining facility. We would also envision grab and go in the expresses where they could grab, you know, healthier uh, selection salads, which we serve salads and we serve, again, I mentioned fruit. Uh, and there would be basically a limit as to how much they could spend. And we have to decide how we do that. But I know I kind of dive into the detail as a retailer, uh, retail is detail. So we do need to sort out exactly how much uh, each uh, service member can spend 
relative to the meal card, and then it gets balanced out at the end of the month. Now, the reason everyone uh, wins is because family members can come in and join them as they, they, they uh, uh, eat their meals, and that's really good, extended family members, friends. So I envision, um, once again, a, a much more family, serving family approach than we have in the past, and then you're building that community or rebuilding the community. And I think that's another aspect of this that's very important, is to get that sense of community and drawing all the services together to support that warfighter. So as I mentioned, we're all in to support this, and uh, as Chuck knows, who's really led this effort now for years, almost a decade, who's been brilliant in leading the effort and setting the vision the problem is, is that we, we do need to kind of finally get together at the service level and make it happen with unity of command and uh, making sure that we're, we're there for them in every aspect to support it. Thank you, Tommy. The one thing I've been really impressed with is your team's efforts in really researching and, and finding those healthiest brands in our nation, right? I mean, you're, you're not just arbitrarily picking healthy choices or healthy brands out there. You've done your homework on that, so well, kudos to your team to, on that. Yeah, one thing I should add is that we, yeah. we also envision with the, the brands that are not that healthy or yeah. don't have a lot of choice, limit the menu items. For example, you can actually get a salad now, grilled chicken salad at Popeye's. Not too many people know that, but what we need to do is a better job of promoting those menu items that will be part of the, of the campus dining experience because we have contracts with a lot of these vendors that we can't just exit from. We have to gradually transition, which is what we've been doing. We opened up 52 uh, Better For You or BeFit concepts this last year alone. So, but we have to be cognizant of these contracts that we have with vendors and we want to support their journey too and then limit the number of choices that uh, service members have to those things that are uh, deemed, again, by these two gentlemen and their, uh, their colleagues uh, in the Air Force and the Army as to what's uh, should be part of the, the menu for a healthy base uh, option. So General Silveria, uh, you've been leading the way in transforming. I mean, we, we've been doing a lot of work out the Air Force Academy. Whenever it came to new initiatives and bringing in healthier choices, you've always raised your hand and said, let USAFA go first. And so I, we really appreciate that. Uh, what's the way ahead uh, for, for this effort and how will it benefit the military installations and really the community, the total force? Well, uh, well, thanks for the, that about uh, our willingness to take this on. Uh, it helps to have 4,018 to 24 year olds that are that are pushing us uh, every single day. And I also add, uh, Representative Bryan's uh, has has been a great help and a great supporter. So, so, uh, so, and and as well as uh, uh, DoD really from the beginning. So, so thanks. As I mentioned in in uh, in, in the first answer, it's going to take all of us and a multi layered solution to get at this. I mean, I think for us, the, the, the phases that we've gone through, the grab and go with the cadet involvement, I think uh, partnering with AFES, I, I think is, is, so, is so important. And I think that, that those phasings uh, for us that will allow a cadet those choices as they have through their day and through their week. But I think the next phase for us that can't be too far away is that we have to partner with the local community. And the cadets should have the ability to not just go to the AFES vendor, but on the weekend should be able to go to a vendor that is uh, in the local community. And this will do a few things. This will draw, draw the community closer to the cadets and the cadets closer to the community. And, and we can also uh, dictate you know, where we build those relationships, what kind of dining and what kind of food that is as we continue to promote the healthy choices. So I think the vision here ought to be that over time, a cadet, uh, we like to have lunch together. It's part of our community, part of our development of cadets. Uh, we like to have lunch together. But beyond that, a cadet ought to be able to eat at an AFES facility. They ought to be able to eat downtown. They ought to be able to grab stuff so they can keep going uh, on, on their demanding day. They ought to be able to have a workout and grab what they need. And that all of that ought to be designed in a way that through the day, unbeknownst to them, that, that they have had healthy eating options uh, throughout the day. And I think there's a great opportunity for us to lead the way to partner with the Colorado Springs community with this. And then if we can get that to work, I don't think there's any reason that that can't work in a lot of communities around the United States. Absolutely. 
So gentlemen, before we uh, open up to questions of the audience, uh, just some closing remarks. Um, you know, how can the DOD support you? How can our community leaders support you? We, we already see, we have the evidence of you guys working together, supporting each other, and I think that's key. This is the first time in probably the last decade I've been working on these initiatives where the stars are aligning, where we're seeing leadership support from both Congress, from the DOD, and certainly at your levels. So I, I'm very hopeful that we're gonna start seeing some progress. Uh, so closing, closing comments, General Becker. I, I would just like to highlight one thing just from my perspective. This is Becker's perspective, not necessarily the Army. So we talked about obesity and the challenge with recruiting. We talked about obesity, the challenge with retention. But the reason I'm passionate about this, I've been doing it for 33 years. I've got more than a few combat tours. I've got both of my sons with combat tours. You know, what we do is physically demanding. It's up close and personal in the Army. You, you close with and destroy the enemy. And so you, you have to be physically and mentally strong. And that's the, the, the fueling part. And, you know, I go to the gymnasiums and, and we're doing so much better. And we say, well, we, we, should, we should have a gymnasium similar to, you know, a university athlete's. It ought to be better. They go out on Saturday and play sports for a few hours. Our men and women go to combat and close with and destroy the enemies. Our gyms ought to be better. Our fueling options ought to be better. They are warrior athletes. And so that, that's why I'm passionate about this. I mean, recruiting is important. Retention is important. But at the end of the day, the Army exists to close with and destroy the enemies of our country, period. And so if we are not physically and mentally prepared to do that, we will fail. And, and we are doing a pretty good job on the physical fitness. We're rolling out a new physical fitness test. But in all the years that I've been doing this, I've never had any lack of opportunity to challenge myself physically. But, but there have been op challenges when I come to an installation and I want to grab something to eat and the only thing that open, is open is Burger King and I haven't had a chance to go shopping yet because I just rolled in you know, or I go to the shop at. So th to me, this, this is critically important. This, this is the missing part of what the MedCom deemed the triad years ago, the, 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 the exercise, the sleep, and the diet. And, and this is the third part of that triad. And, and again, it's great, we'll, we'll tackle obesity, we'll tackle recruiting retention, but at the end of the day, we need men and women that are prepared to go do what our country expects them to be able to do, and that's close with and destroy the enemy. So that's, that's why I'm passionate about this. I will continue to be until the Army asks me to retire, and I hope that everybody's eating healthy and feeling good by then. Well, great closing remarks, thank you. Mr. Scholl. Uh, yes, first of all, I wanna thank uh, ADC again for allowing the opportunity for us to talk about campus dining and, and for APHIS in particular to be part of this partnership. Uh, we really believe in our mission, which is to support troops and, and their families. And we do believe we're a critical part of readiness and resiliency. We, uh, we can really make it a difference. We do make a difference now, but we can make an even greater difference if we're part of this solution. Uh, I remember back when I was serving, believe it or not, we had a lot of Korean War veterans uh, at that time, uh, and I'm talking about my senior officers who'd been to Korea, my brigade commander, uh, ADC, and a few others. And uh, they talked a lot about uh, units being overrun in Korea during the Korean War. And the reason they were overrun is because they just weren't fit. That was a big reason why they were overrun, because they couldn't. They had to withdraw quickly, as, you, as those of you are historians remember, we had to withdraw very quickly and we lost a lot of soldiers because they just couldn't keep up with the pace of uh, moving to safety as we could regroup and then win the, the fight. My only point is, is that this is, this is all about readiness and about uh, making sure not, not only are the warriors fit, but they will survive in combat and uh, we have an obligation. It's beyond just a good thing to do. This is an obligation to support them. Uh, with that, I, uh, General Abrams, who I had the honor to meet in 1972, I, I led the parade for him at West Point, his last parade. He said, his advice to me after the parade is, son, never pass up a golden opportunity to keep your mouth shut. So I, I will conclude with that, but it is uh, such an honor to be part of this. We're all in. Uh, we execute. Uh, I would say violently, but that uh, probably doesn't work in this, this, this audience, but we do execute rapidly. So as we are aligned with uh, the Army and the Air Force, we will, we will execute to, to, the, to this new mission, which we're thankful to be a part of. Thank you. Yeah, we, we make reference a lot to, to fueling. And, and what I've seen over the years, you know, in, in all, all of our services is we've made 
huge investments in air, you know, space, sea, and ground forces, and our equipment and weapon systems, but very little investment in our human weapon systems when it comes to something basic like providing nutritious food. And you're right, General Becker. I mean, you, you know, we see college and universities have superior dining facilities, uh, student unions to what we have today. So it's something that we certainly need to change. General Silveria? Well, I'd, I'd just like to add that it's uh, certainly true that we need, to, we need better nutrition and better health for, for the warriors that, that we need out there. But uh, in, in our position in Colorado Springs of the Air Force Academy, we also want to focus on teaching the life skill that goes with that. It's not just about the appropriate food for those four years while they're there. It's teaching them the skill about nutrition and not just about surviving, but that human weapon system about thriving. So we want to teach them that skill. And these are all going to be officers. They're all going to be leaders so they can go out into their units and they can then also teach that same skill. So I think we have an opportunity here and great partners uh, with AFES and with the communities. I think we have a real opportunity to make a difference. Absolutely. I mean, they're going to be future superintendents, future chiefs of the Air right. Force. And that's absolutely right. They're, they're our future leaders. Got to make sure that we do this right. So I think we have uh, about uh, 10 minutes left for some Q&A. From what I understand, we do not have uh, mics to pass around. So... Um, it's hard for me to see you out there. Um, I will try to uh, rephrase Somebody the question so we have it. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm Don Anderson from uh, Lakewood. We're the host community of Joint Base Lewis Report. And we're in an urban area, and we get traffic jams a couple times a day, lunch yep. and dinner. Uh, as the lemmings come off the base and to eat and go back on, uh, it's virtually impossible for, for an individual to timely research what the healthy option is. Does the Wendy salad have 75 grams of fat and right. 1,000 calories? Have you looked into having an app for your soldiers and airmen uh, so they can check to see what the healthy option is of chains and those directions? Yeah, there's actually, uh, there was a company that we worked with during Healthy Base Initiative, and it was the Healthy Dining Finder. And it was an app that you could find healthy choices outside in the, in the communities. I mean, I think that's something that we could certainly take a look at. I, there's other companies other than Healthy. That, that's the one that just comes to mind right now. Um, but I know it's something that, Tom, you've talked about this as well. Uh, you guys have an app, and, and you're working towards something like this. Uh. Well, we're working with uh, MCOM now to, to roll out what we call Digital Garrison which is an app for all services on the installation. We haven't come up with a comparable name yet for the Air Force, but and we're going to work with them. But a digital garrison, the idea is every service will be on one app, and you'll, you will PCS and go to the next station, and you can then pick up the services at that next duty station. But what's really uh, neat about this is it, it'll be uh, tied to the, all the, the food options as well, and that's a great idea. What we should do is make sure that the... Uh, as we select menu uh, choices that are gonna be part of the meal card, that we, we ensure that the, the caloric content and the nutrition uh, uh, value is, is prominent. And we can do that. That's what's great about this digital world now is all that can be put literally on one app uh, on, and on the smartphones. And the, uh, so I see ultimately the vision is that the, there'll be an app for all services, you know, haircuts, food, dining facilities, schools, everything. And uh, certainly we can get into that. The great thing about that is we can get into detail as to what, what their, uh, their choices are and what it means and, and educate at the same time. Educate them as, as General Severia was talking about, making sure we educate the young soldier so it's a lifelong commitment uh, to uh, making better choices and staying fit as part of their duty as a, as a warfighter. So I, I'll, I, I hear you, and that's, great. that's a great idea. Thank you, John. Hey, Mr. Miller, if I could just, <clears throat> just add to that. I mean, that app exists, and, and I'm not concerned about the people that are using the app now because they're already paying close attention to what they're eating and, and what they're putting in their bodies. It's, it's the other 95% of the people that could be using that app. They just don't take the time. They're the ones that we need those grab and goes and those healthy options on the installations that are convenient because they're just going to go grab whatever is convenient. They're not going to take the time to use the app. The app exists. And I know a number of people who use it. They can go in and tell you exactly 
you know, what, what, what kind of calories they're getting, what, where those calories are coming from. Uh, and again, those are not the folks I'm worried about because they're already paying attention. So that's why it's so critical that we provide these options in our dining facilities, our grab and goes, and our fitness centers. So that for those other 90% of the people that don't want to have to think about it, they just want to grab something quickly and go, you know, we're helping them think about it by providing those healthy options at the grab and go. And, you know, again, when you look at the numbers, over 70% of our service members and families live off installation. I mean, that's where they're eating. That's where a lot of them are eating today. So to your point, really the next phase of campus dining, you know, let's let our meal card holders go off installation. We've got to figure the, the, the on-base part first. Right. We have to walk before we run. Uh, but I think that's going to be the future uh, that we're looking at. And when we talk about this, this campus dining model, you know, we're not talking about doing the entire DOD. I, I think these individuals up here, we're looking at a handful of installations to include the Air Force Academy. We're really going to beta test this to make sure that we have declining balance card. We've got the right tools in place to be able to roll something like this out. Then we'll go back to DOD, Congress, and really show proof of concept um, you know, that we can do a college university campus dining model. Again, this isn't revolutionary. It's something that, that's been in place for decades now. But um, things are never easy and never quick in the DOD. Again, I've been working on this initiative for a long time. So we have a lot of lessons learned. We know how to do it. Now we just have to get at it with the leadership that we have. Other questions? Yes. Yeah, I, I would say we're probably more than a decade behind schedule, uh, David. Um, the good news is, again, this, is, this isn't anything complex. I mean, we don't need, it, it, it actually isn't. I mean, when, when, when we did HPI, we, we went to Google, we went to, we went to the very best companies that are out there. We know exactly how they're doing it. You know, to do a campus dining model is, is relatively simple to do. Um, we, just, we just, you know, need the support to be able to do that. Uh, to, to go out and get outside money at this point, not necessarily needed. Uh, I think we've got enough support inside the house. And the key here, I think, again, we have leadership support uh, up on the stage to be able to get this done. Uh, other questions? Is there someone in the back? Yes, sir. Uh, Brian Potts, Colorado Springs. Hey, Brian. Good to see you. Good to see you, Brian. Yeah, that, that's a great question. And, and MCOM has in the past been involved with supporting youth sports and other youth activities in the community for that very reason. Um, but as resources are, you know, as we go through a resource constrained environment and, and fiscal constraints, we look at how much, you know, we can invest in our community versus just our military community. I mean, that, that's a great question because it, it does start before they're 18. Though I, I will tell you, it doesn't take long. And I watched. Uh, I watched my son go through basic, com basic combat training as an infantryman. He was a college athlete. He was extremely physically fit, but as a college athlete, he was free to drink beer or eat junk food whenever he wanted to. Um, and while he was a great athlete, I watched him go through basic training where the physical training was not nearly as rigorous as what he has gone through as a college athlete. But there was, there, in those dining facilities at Basic Common, there's no soda, there's just milk, water, and in the summer months when it's hot, Gatorade, even though it has a lot of sugar because it, it helps them rehydrate. There's no desserts. And, and what he looked like at the end of that uh, 10 weeks of basic combat training, I, I, I barely recognized him. 
And, and I know that that physical part of it, because I, I watched what we would do with the average, you know, soldier training and soldier in training over the 10 weeks was not phys as physically demanding as what he'd done for four years in college, but just the diet alone over those 10 weeks completely transformed him. Now, for, because he was a former athlete, he, it wasn't an issue. For some of these young men and women, it, it, it would take months, it, and, and it does take months, and that's why we are looking at extending basic combat training, not because we have to teach them more skills. Shoot, move, and communicate, we can do that in 10 weeks. No problem, probably do it in less. But to develop them physically takes more than 10 weeks. And, and, it, and it's, it's their diet, it's their physical training. I, I agree we need, to, we need to partner with communities. I, we need the communities involved in helping our young men and women. I mean, it can't just be a DOD problem. I mean, it, it affects us, it affects readiness, but it can't just be our problem. I mean, we, we can't fix it. We have enough things internally we've got to fix as well. Yeah, the one, one thing that we learned when we did the Healthy Base Initiative uh, is that children influence their parents and parents influence their children, especially when it comes to healthy eating choices. If we can influence parents or if we can influence kids, that has an impact on the family. So if, if we start seeing healthier choices on the installation, we start working with the local communities, you know, it, it's going to take time. It, you know, we're not going to turn this around overnight. It will take time before we start seeing these changes. But the key is families, too. Uh, we definitely have to work with families. We've been talking a lot about service members up here, but families are, are key to this as well. So, other questions? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, we're, yeah, we're, we're in spotlights up here, so. Yeah, we can't see anything. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. At the Army level? It's, General, it's do you want to? That, that's the challenge. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. I, I would, yeah. Because it's joint base. Yeah, it's a joint base, which, yeah. I mean, healthy eating initiatives is our smallest problem on joint bases right now. So, if, if I had my way, joint base Langley Eustis would not exist by tomorrow. Um, but it does. Uh, nor would joint base San Antonio. We might keep Lewis McCord, but. Uh, Wait a minute. I, I would say it is, it is the installation commander. Um, it, it is a challenge at the, the, the joint base environments, but the installation commander, and, and we're not there yet. Uh, believe me, I've been working on this for 10 years now, and we've made small strides, and, and, and it's tough. But when, when I, I actually interviewed every installation commander before we picked those 14 installations to beta test this, uh, we had congressional support at the time, too. And there were some of those commanders that I interviewed that we didn't select because, you know, they, they didn't walk the walk or talk the talk. They weren't committed to what we were doing. But there's a lot of commanders out there that are willing to, to make these changes. So what we're talking about here is yet another uh, really demo to really try to figure out how to make some of these improvements. Um, and, and it's going back to kind of a fundamental entitlement for a service member who's supposed to be getting, you know, paid for three meals a day in a dining facility, but they're only using a meal and a half. How do we allow that member to eat outside of the dining facility for their other entitlement? So it, it's going to be that. It's infusing community support. It's also going to be getting that commander involved. We haven't announced which installations that we're looking at doing this right now. Um, that's probably going to come out later on down the road. Um, but 
Yeah, General Silver. Yeah, I just wanted to add a, a point. One of the things that we were very deliberate about uh, about two years ago when we really dug into this was uh, the addition of people like you, which nutritionists. We added three to our staff, one in our athletic department, and two up uh, uh, with the cadets in the dining facility that allowed us to really get that professional input on that. And that's made a, that's made a huge difference uh, in the way that we've done business. So I, that was part of what we did. So thank you for what you do, because that's one once we had that, that expertise, that also helped us solve those detailed problems. At the end of the day, an individual has to make choice, so we have to give them the right choices to make. And, and a nutrition professional was, uh, was a huge help when we started down this path. But it is complex because we have so many different people in charge of food. You know, General Becker has MWR. Uh, Tom Scholl's got the exchange piece of it, and then we've got to bring the G4 in, you know, for the dining facility piece of it. It's a matter of pulling all those things together, working together towards a t common cause here. And we're, we're eventually going to get there, I'm very hopeful, uh, but today it's still very disjointed. But to your point, I mean, the joint base adds a whole no another level of complexity because who's in charge? I mean, you've got a senior army commander with almost no authorities. You've got a board that comes together to discuss issues. Who's in charge of restoration, modernization? Who's in charge of sustainment? Where do those dollars come from? So maybe we need to pilot a joint base yeah. between the Air Force. I mean, the, the most, most bases that are joint are, not all, are Air Force Army, either Lewis McCord run by the Army, or San Antonio Langley Eustis run by the Air Force, maybe we pilot one of our joint bases, because if we can tackle that at a joint base, it'll be easy on other bases. Because I, I, I hear joint basing almost every day. I get a call from uh, Gary Valeski at Fort Lewis, or I get a call from General Jeff Buchanan there at, uh, at Joint Base San Antonio on all the challenges we have with our joint base. Like I said, the Healthy Eating Initiative is important, but that's probably the smallest problem we have on a joint Your base. Right now. Langley Eustis. Oh, Langley Eustis. Okay. OSD just did a study, and, and they acknowledged between Langley Eustis, uh, McGuire Dixon, and uh, San Antonio are probably the three biggest challenges we have with joint bases, where they're geographically separated. Lewis McCord, not as challenging because they're, they do have share a fence line. Meyer Henderson Hall, not as challenging. They're all on one base, they all have the same mission. But we're geographically separated, like Langley Eustis, um, San Antonio. A huge challenges, and it's not not any service's fault, but it's just the geographic separation. It didn't achieve the, I mean, it, it's already broken the the, the, the tenant of unity of command, but it, it's it's not achieved the the efficiencies that we thought it would, and it's just created a lot of challenges. I'm getting the uh, the time hack that our time is over, um, so I want to thank our panelists for being here today, and uh, answering some pretty tough questions and uh, being on board with all the work that we're doing and kind of looking into the future. I think we've got the right team in place to be able to do that. Special thanks to the ADC for inviting us here today, and uh, we look forward to continuing to work with you. Thank you.